sure about this, Gracie? I've never been more sure about anything in my life. House is all buttoned up. Is there anything else I can do? No, thank you, Steve. Is that from your dad's office? Yeah, it is. It's actually from the Circle Cross. Kennedy, trust me. You don't want to drag this out. Just sign the papers and sell it. It's just my dad was born on that ranch. He grew up there. Met my mother. I fell in love. I know how hard this is for you, but I'm here. I'll help you through it. I promise. You are his sole beneficiary. The Circle Cross belongs to you now. However, he stipulates that if you should choose to sell it, you have to be there in person to do it. So you're telling me I actually have to go there to sell the ranch? As a condition of the will, yes. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. I mean, when I was growing up, I used to beg him to take me to see that place. He always resisted. Now he says I have to go. There's a cousin of yours there who's an accountant, Smith Blaine. He's been keeping the books. You think he might have some answers? Only one way to find out. Looks like I'm going to Valentine.
like to just cut to the chase. Please. Did Talbot mention that this is not the first offer we've had on the ranch over the years? No. As I understand it, your father wouldn't consider selling. I mean, I can understand why he wanted to hang on to the old place. He probably had some sentimental attachment. And you can take my word for it, that is a good offer under the circumstances. What circumstances? Well, running a ranch is a dicey proposition in the best of times. One bad year can set you back for a long time. And, well, the Circle Cross has had more bad years than good here recently. The ranch is losing money? I hate to be the bearer of bad news. You know, I'm not seeing a buyer's name on here anywhere. Well, at the present, they wish to remain anonymous. But what I can tell you is they are very motivated. <laughs> so you can go ahead and sign and date right next to the X. You know, I did have one question. Sure. Do you know why my father put in his will that I had to come here to sell the ranch? You know, actually, I was kind of wondering about that myself. You know, whenever my parents talked about Valentine, they always called it home. <laughs> Their home. That's not yours. But I've never even seen it. it. Seems silly to come all this way and not have a look. dog. Are you lost? What? Main road's back that way. Oh, no, I was just admiring the house. Oh, so you figured you'd drive on private property, invite yourself up on the porch, and have a good look through the window. No, that was not... I don't go into the city much. It's just how it's done these days. Well, I don't come out to the country much, but I heard you people were supposed to be friendly. Oh, you want friendly? Try knocking on the door introducing yourself. Maybe you should introduce yourself, since you're the one that's trespassing. Excuse me? This is the Circle Cross Ranch. Well, that's what the sign says. Well, my name is Kennedy Blaine, and I own this property. <laughs> what are you talking about? Here. See for yourself. You're Smith Blaine's cousin? That's right. Second cousin, technically, I think, which is not the point. Smith didn't say anything to me about a new owner showing up. Well, why should he? For all I know, you're just some squatter. Now, hold on a minute. Derek? Oh, didn't know you had company. She was just leaving. <laughs> I'm June Sterling. Oh, I'm Kennedy Blaine. Nice to meet you. Wow, your mom was Grace Morgan. Ran off with Kenny Blaine a long time ago. You knew my parents? Well, well enough to recognize their daughter. I mean, you're the spitting image of your mom. <laughs> Welcome home, honey. You know, those families were so dead set against your folks getting married. Especially your grandfather, Gabriel Morgan. He couldn't stand the thought of his only daughter marrying a Blaine. He's still alive, you know. No, no, I didn't. Mom, she's not here for a family reunion. She claims to own the Circle Cross now. Oh. oh does, does that mean that both of your parents have passed? My mom died five years ago, and Dad died just recently. They were still young. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Well, you did the right thing coming here. Why don't you stay for dinner? Oh, no, I don't want to impose, and I really wasn't planning on a long stay. Don't be silly. We have plenty of room. Stay with us. No, 
really, seriously. Uh, all right. Good. So you can follow us to the house. Oh, so you don't live here? No, this is the main house. That's where the Blaines live. The, um, the foreman's house is quite a ways over there, actually. Foreman. You didn't tell her? We, we, we were just getting to that. Oh. oh, this makes so much sense now. I have a package for you. The funny thing is that John Morgan and Alexander Blaine were best friends when they came out west together in the 1870s. They were searching for gold like everybody else. However, the story goes that it wasn't very long before they both fell in love with the same woman. So what happened? Well, she chose Alexander, and the feud started right then and there. It's been going ever since. Such a waste. So, um, Kennedy, what do you do? Uh, I just finished law school. So I need to take the bar exam next month back in L.A. Well, I hope you're going to have time to see the ranch before you go back. Yeah, I'd like that. Well, Derek can show you around. Oh, I have stuff to do for the next couple of days, Mom. I'm sorry. Listen, I'm sorry about the whole squatter thing. I think I'm just nervous. This is all so sudden coming here. Why are you here? I'm here to close the sale. Of the ranch? Yes, but I didn't know anyone lived here. And, and now that I've seen the property and the house, I had no idea this all belonged to me. You know, it takes more than a piece of paper to belong to a place. I'm gonna check on the horses, Mom. Nice meeting you. Yeah, you too. He's very protective. <laughs> Loves this place like it's his own. He learned everything there is to know about how to run it from John, but my husband. So when he passed away, it was just natural Derek take over. Hasn't been easy, but we've always taken those words to heart. We've been so blessed to live here. Can't even imagine a better place to call home. Oh, the, pa the package. To Kennedy Blaine, care of the Circle Cross Ranch from Gregory Talbot, who's our lawyer. This is my mother's writing. Dad must have had this sent here. I think he sent me. It's a classic story, forbidden love. But for Kenny and I, the only thing forbidden was letting others try to control us. I'll admit, at first it was a thrill, dangerous and fun. Then it became a burden, always on edge, always looking over our shoulders. One day, Kenny said, our happiness should never be a struggle. He took me to his family's ranch, the Circle Cross. And there, we fell deeper in love with each other then. Yeah, everything's been good. I know, but it's only a few days and I still have a month before the exam. Study while I'm here. 
Yeah, no, I know. Hey, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm really tired. I think I'm gonna turn in early. Is that okay? Okay, thanks. Good night, Steve. Is hot. Would you like some tea? Oh, uh, I actually need to talk to Derek first. Is he around? Uh, you know, he was just riding out. You might still catch him in the stables. Thanks. Hey there. <laughs> well, you just pop up everywhere, don't you? I can say the same thing about you. to talk to you about the ranch. What about it? When was the last time Smith Blaine was here? <laughs> the only time I see him is when he gets another offer. You know, lucky for you, your dad had the sense not to be tempted by dollar signs over the years. So you don't think I should sell? A person will have to be a fool to sell a place like this. Even with all the money it's losing. What are you talking about, losing money? Smith painted a different picture of this place. He told me how rough things have been lately. Look, the Circle Cross hasn't lost a dime since I took over as foreman. The last four years have been our best ever. Your dad put the profits back into the ranch, hired more hands, so Derek, I don't- I'm sure you've done your best, but Smith is our accountant. He keeps very careful books. Well, he's not the only one. My father kept written ledgers while he ran the place. I started putting everything on the computer when it took over. Nothing fancy, but it saves a lot of time. This is quite the setup. Yeah, we got indoor plumbing now and everything. Hey, no, I wasn't Look, trying to. Uh, that's got all the ranch records for the past four years. You can see for yourself how I do things. Where are you going? I got a ranch to run. I'll say. Have you been inside the family house yet? No, not yet. You gotta see that. Now I'm gonna go get the keys. So Derek and I come over here about once a week, make sure everything's okay, you know? No, no leaks, no critters. Oh, you've done a great job. The place has been kept so beautiful. You know, this room pretty well tells the Blaine family history. Mm, my father's family. That dude like this. My mom and dad always talked about how much they loved growing up here. But after mom died, dad never mentioned Circle Cross again. I will take it from an old woman who knows there's no greater force in this universe than True love. You're a wise woman, not old. And I'm old enough to know the difference. Okay. <laughs> then I'm gonna let you look around and I'll, I'll see you later. Okay.
I don't understand. The ranch foreman kept his own records? He has everything, down to the penny. And according to him, the ranch is making money. Some years better than others. And Smith says it's been losing money the whole time. What do you know about this guy? Uh, he's a cowboy. Meaning what exactly? It's like in the movies, except real. I mean, he's strong and sure, stubborn. Clearly a lot smarter than he lets on, and... And he seems like a good man. I'm not accusing anybody of anything, but your father received reports from Smith Quarterly for years. Well, did he read them? Um, the ranch is the least of your father's investments. Did he ever show them to you? No, I don't even know where they are. Look, something is just not adding up here, and I gotta get to the bottom of it. Send me the Cowboys quarterlies. And I'll track down Smith's records. Uh, it might take a week, but I'll go through everything and get back to you. Thank you. Oh, uh, how do you like the place? It's growing on me. I'm here to see Gabriel Morgan. My name is Kennedy Blaine. Is Mr. Morgan expecting you? I'm his granddaughter. Have a seat. This isn't a social call. I prefer to stand. Suit yourself. State your purpose. Are you behind the offer to buy Circle Cross? <laughs> I wouldn't take that property if you gave it to me. I don't want anything owned by a Blaine. Yeah, well, I'm a prime example of that. Now, your parents should have told you. You're not wanted here. They told me. And I stayed away until now. But I'm not here for travel advice, Mr. Morgan. I just want one more thing before I go. Mm -hmm. An explanation. For what? How you treated my mother. Your daughter. Why? Our families have had a long history together. Uh, you can't just roll into town and expect to understand every little thing between people. They were in love. They were happy. What's so wrong with that? <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm only laughing because your mother stood right there 25 years ago and asked those same questions. I, I don't explain. I don't justify my actions to anybody. No. Unless you have other business. To she missed you. We all did. Well, it was as much her choice to do what she did as it was mine to let her go. I think I got all the information I need. Self-confidence and determination. You know where that came from? Hmm? You may have been born to blame. But you're a Morgan through and through. I like that. Thanks for your time. Uh, 
I'm doing everything I can. Mm hmm No, of course she's gonna sell. She's not a rancher, she's a city girl. We just need to give her a little time to get over the whole dewy-eyed thing with the ranch and her parents. I mean, no, listen to me. I, I've worked too hard to make this happen. One way or another, this deal's going through. Sorry to bother you, boss, but I figured you'd want to see this. Check it out. Looks like somebody made themselves right at home. Yeah, we checked the area, but we didn't see anybody. He's been here for a couple of days. Could be a drifter. Maybe already moved on. I'll clean this up. That way, if he comes back, I'll know we're onto him. Sure. Tell the others to keep an eye out. OK? Good thing, boss. Seriously? <laughs> right? Jimmy Bone. <gasps> All right, cheers. You know there's more where that came from. Hello? Back here. Hey. Hey. So what's all this? Well, I figured since I'm a Blaine, I should be staying in the Blaine house. You wanted to know why I'm here, and today it hit me. I want to know more about my family. What better way than to stay in my father's old house? It's a big house for one person. Oh, I'll be fine. Besides, it takes more than a piece of paper to belong to a place, right? Fair enough. I, um, I saw my grandfather today. You did? How'd that go? I expected him to answer my questions. Tell me all the things he's been holding in for so many years, and he laughed at me. Whatever he had to say, he said it to your folks a long time ago. That old man is so stubborn, he can argue with a wall and win. <laughs> hey, don't let it get to you. Well, if he's waiting for me to run away like my parents, he'll be waiting for a long time. Hey, Derek, listen, I went over your records for the ranch. Yeah? They look fine to me. Well, good. What I don't understand is why Smith would tell me we've been losing money all along. Well, maybe you should ask him. I will, just after my lawyer has a chance to look at your records. You just said they were fine, right? Oh, Mr. Talbot has access to all the reports that Smith had been sending my dad. He just needs to compare them. To make sure who's telling the truth. No, Derek, <sighs> you don't understand. My father was a solid businessman. But after my mother died, he wasn't himself. He was heartbroken. I mean, I doubt he ever looked at those reports. Smith could have been telling him anything. Look, do me a favor. Once you get the comparison bag, talk to me first, not Smith. Why? He thinks he's the big dog around here. He doesn't like to be crossed. If you have to confront him, I would like to go with you. Let him sit across from me saying that the ranch is losing money. OK, will do. Thanks. No problem. Wilson, come on, boy. Go home. Go, boy. Hey, what's wrong with you? We usually don't warm up to anybody this fast. Oh, well, I'm not so bad. Once you get to know me. Listen, come on, boy. Let's go home. What's wrong with you, buddy? You want to go home? Huh? You want to go home? I'm 
sorry. Am I missing something? I thought that the whole point of going there was to sell the ranch. It was. I mean, that's what I thought, but none of this is what I expected. Oh, I'm sure it's a wonderful place with lots of nice people, but Kennedy, your life is here. You have a home, friends. You're starting a new career, which, by the way, you're falling way behind studying for the bar. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking about that. What if I took the bar exam here? You're not serious. There is still a lot of work to do with the ranch. What, you want to live there? I think I need to find out what I want. Kennedy, I miss you. I know we've never talked about it in so many words, but I always thought that you and I, that we belong together. Here. We belong together. Steve, where is this coming from? I, I just thought... Listen, it's getting late. Can we talk about this some other time? Sure. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Morning. Oh, hi. Didn't mean to scare you. No, I just, I didn't hear you drive up. Well, I'm sorry, but uh, is this the uh, Circle Cross Ranch? Yeah, that's right. A fella in town said you might be doing some hiring. Uh, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to talk to the ranch foreman about that. Derek Sterling. Derek Sterling, that's right. Yeah, I do know the name. He lives just over there. Over there? It's a friend of yours? I own the ranch. Nice place. Kind of big, though, for you to have all to yourself, way out here in the middle of nowhere. You know, why don't I call him and tell him you're here? I'm sure he'll be right No, up. that's OK. I can find him. Thank you. You have a nice day. Did you get his name? No, he just said he was looking for work. I mean, anyone from around here knows we only hire extra hands in the fall for Roundup. Well, he didn't exactly look like he knew one end of a horse from the other. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know. I just, I grew up in the city, and I got the feeling so did he. He said he knew your name. Hmm. What did he look like? Hmm, stocky, dark hair, looked like he slept in his clothes. He had a, a scar on his cheek. Do you know him? Probably he just heard my name in town, you know. I'll take a look around just in case. All right, thanks. Hey, um, I was supposed to give mom a writing to Valentine. Would you mind? Not at all. I need to pick up something a little more appropriate to wear around here anyway. Appreciate it. Listen, I'm getting called back into a meeting. Can I get back to you later? Great, thanks. What's the occasion? Well, the Dandelion Festival. Every year, the church raises money by selling foods and arts and crafts and things. To, and we bring kids out from the city to spend the weekend here. They go camping and fishing and, you know, getting some fresh air. Oh, that sounds wonderful. It's fun. And Pastor Morgan, he sets up a booth every year, so he wants me to sell my, what he calls, world-famous dandelion pies. Another Morgan. 
Apart from my grandfather, I haven't met anyone on the Morgan side yet. That's easy to fix. Come to church with us on Sunday, and I'll introduce you. I'd like that. So do you have a lot of family here in Valentine? No, it's just Derek and me. Still, must have been nice for him growing up here. Well, Derek didn't grow up here. John and I did. Yeah, see, back then it wasn't easy to get a good paying job around here. So we moved to Chicago. John worked in a factory. And we were young and we wanted this big family, but it didn't happen. And so I was actually volunteering at a city mission and Derek came up for adoption. Mm. So nice. Yeah. Our prayers were definitely answered. So how long did you live in Chicago? Mm. We didn't move back to Valentine until Derek was almost 16. Wow, never would have guessed. Well, it wasn't easy for him growing up in the city. What do you mean? You know, this isn't really my story to tell. And we still have a lot of shopping to do, so, um, vamanos. Just missing, boy. Kennedy! Well, oh, there you are. Hi. Um, I tried to call you, but I kept getting your answering machine. I was afraid you were on your way back home. Uh, no, I'm staying at the ranch. Reception's not always the best. I was curious if you thought about that offer. I haven't stopped thinking about it. The other party is very eager to close that deal. Oh, I'm sure. Place is a steal at that price. What are you saying? Oh, I think you know what I'm saying. Mr. Talbot and I just have to do our due diligence. Shouldn't take long. Well, then. You have a good day, June. Say hi to Derek for me, will you? I will. Enjoy your stay. Will do. friends miss you. Ah, uh, Steve. I think he wishes he was more than a friend. And he's not? He's a sweet guy. Met in law school. Became study partners. Spent a lot of late nights together. And he fell in love. Uh, we are not a couple. He really cares about me, but if there was anything there, I should miss him more. And they don't. Do you ride? When other kids were practicing the piano, I was taking riding lessons. My parents used to always hang around and watch. I think it must have reminded them of this place. Hey, do you think, do you think it'd be all right? It's your horse. I'll go get changed. <laughs>
supposed to know it was you coming out of nowhere. What? Who are you looking at me like that for? You can run? Yeah, I mean, a little, you know. No, I didn't know. I know now. It says you can ride. Let me show you the place. That's beautiful. You see that tree line over there? Where? <laughs> right there. You see? There's a valley that runs between those hills there. You believe that wagon trains used to bring settlers through here on their way west? Really? Yeah. If you look close on the trail, you can still see where the wheel was horned in the ground. <laughs> Your mother said there was a family graveyard? Yeah, not just family either. There's folks buried there. This is as far as they got on the trail. It's a long ride. I'll take you next time. You know, my parents always talked about how special this place was. I'm really glad that I'm seeing it for myself. And what do you think about this place? I think they were right. Thank you for showing me. My pleasure. We should, we should start back. I was thinking, I really think you should stay here tonight with mom and me, just in case that fella comes back. Listen, it took me my whole life to get here. I'm not gonna let anybody scare me off now. Hey, look, Cuddy and Brian, they came across with some empty bottles and trash in one of the old barns. If there's someone out there, I think we just- Hey, if just... I hear anything, I'll call you, I promise. All right. Okay. So, good night then. Hey, Wilson, stay. Oh, you coming with me? Well, you're such good buddies. Now you can be roomies. Better not snore. He does. Happily. You been out here all night? Thank you. You don't need to do this. Oh, I better get changed. I don't want to be late. Late? Church. Are you gonna make it to the festival? 
Wouldn't miss it for the world. <laughs> we'll pick you up on our way into town. Great. Thanks for the coffee. Silly old man, living up in his castle, all hanging on to that bitterness. <laughs> he doesn't even know me. Hmm. You know what? We've got pies to sell. Yes, we do. <laughs> Excuse me. You must be the long-lost cousin I've been hearing about. Tom Morgan, welcome to Valentine. Kennedy Blaine, thank you. Oh, I could tell your family a mile off. You have your mother smile. Oh, really? Oh, what a sweetheart, that girl. So, Kennedy, what do you think of our little town? I like it. Especially what you're doing for those kids. Well, we're hoping for the best. For the last couple years, uh, Charlie Whalen's been letting the kids camp out at his ranch, but he's been laid up ever since that horse of his threw him, and I'm, I'm having a hard time recruiting anybody else. Pastor Morgan, mm -hmm. I'm sorry to interrupt, but the cookout's just about oh. to start. Oh, well, Robin, what would I do without you? Thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> Have the two of you met? No. Oh, uh, Robin, this is Kennedy Blaine. Nice to meet you. You too. Kennedy is one of the Circle Cross Blaines. I heard you were in town. I understand the ranch is for sale. Robin works with the State Historical Society. Oh, well, nothing's final yet. I'm still going through the paperwork. Hmm. Well, you and I need to talk. But first, we have to get to that cook-off. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> we'll see you soon, cuz. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> see you soon. Looks like you and Pastor Morgan hit it off. We did. He is such a lovely man. Mm. He told me about the trouble they're having finding a campsite for the inner city kids. What do you mean? What about the Charlie Wallen's ranch? Mm -hmm. I guess he can't do it. Well, that's a shame. I was actually thinking maybe they could come to Circle Cross. What do you think? I think that's a great idea. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you guys have so much on your plates. Okay, no. look, no, no, no. This is what we do, OK? Just whatever you need, just let us know. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I mean, if you're free, we can take a ride, pick out a campsite. <laughs> you don't mess around. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. I'll go tell Pastor Morgan. <laughs> I'm excited. <Yes>. Me too. <laughs> She's about to make some kids very happy. More than she will ever know. You like her, don't you?
She was Alexander Blaine's daughter. She was just a child. I know. There was this outbreak of cholera that year. They say that whatever hope there may have been of the Blaine's and Morgan's patching things up, it was lost after John and Morgan refused to come to her funeral. My parents never told me that story growing up. Well, it's not the kind of story you can tell a little girl, right? I guess not. But it's not the way it works, is it? I mean, you can't just tell the good parts. All that anger and bitterness, it's part of the story, too. You know more about my family than I do. No. Oh. Yeah, it's a little embarrassing. No, 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 you shouldn't feel that way. I mean, I just know the history of the land. It just happens to be a family's land, that's it. Everything out here is so untouched, so different from the city. It's like you can sense exactly how people felt a hundred years ago. It makes me feel, I don't know, connected. Connected? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like you feel you're part of something bigger than you, right? Did you feel different when your parents brought you here? What? Your mom told me about Chicago. What Chicago one? What was it? Nothing. I mean, she said you weren't happy there. I'm sorry, did I say something wrong? No, it's just... It's just something I don't like to talk about, that's it. Why not? Just don't, okay? We should start back. Okay. Huh, what do you want? Now, is that any way to greet an old friend from Chicago after all these years? We are not friends. We never were. Well, we had some times, didn't we, D? You was a wild man. You remember that night? Because I do for the last 15 years. You put yourself in that prison, not me. You shot that guy. The way I remember it, you were supposed to have my back that night. That was the deal. I told you I wasn't coming. I told you I was done with all of that. No. The way I see it, you owe me. What are you talking about? I could have turned you in that night, and you just spent the last 15 years in a cell next to me. So that's what this is all about? You trying to shake me down for something that happened when I was a kid? Something I didn't even do? You're wasting your time. Well, you got to ask yourself, D. What would all your God-fearing neighbors think if those type of rumors got around? I say it's got to be worth something. 50000 What do you say? Even if I was willing to pay you off, which I'm not, I don't have that kind of money. Yeah, but your pretty boss does. I see you riding. I've been watching you two, getting all cozy. She wouldn't mind selling a couple horses to help you out. We're done talking. You know what? Maybe you better look at it another way. Don't look at this as a payoff. Maybe you should look at this as health insurance to ensure that nobody gets hurt. You get off of this ranch. You never come back. have to be a fool to sell a place like this. Makes me feel, I don't know, connected. Connected? <laughs> no, way. no yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like you feel you're part of something bigger than you, right?
This is a great thing you're doing here. I couldn't have done it without you. Hey. Want to give it a shot? Nah, I'm good. Let me guess. Uh, they said all the fresh air would do you good. But everything just smells weird, right? OK, can you do me a favor? Go be someone else's best friend. I'm doing just fine. First time I came here, I held my nose for two days. Can you believe that? And at night, oh, gosh, at night, it's so silent. It's like you can hear the grass grow. <laughs> I thought I was going to go crazy. When I was your age, I used to live in the city. Basically, I grew up being tossed from foster home to foster home. For whatever reason, life just kept kicking me around. Until I came here. And after I held my nose for two days, I finally allowed myself to just try it. A new life grabbed me. And I grabbed it back. City slick a turn. Turn tree hugger, huh? <laughs> Must be in my jeans. <laughs> That's cool. I'm Derek, by the way. Danny. Nice to meet you, Danny. Yeah, nice to meet you, too. One day, you'll find it. Just be open, man. They're all asleep. <laughs> it was a big day. I bet they're super tired. Mm. You know, the counselors all said Danny never talks to anyone. He just sits by himself. But he talks to you. Well, I used to be just like him. What do you mean? That's the thing I don't like to talk about. You brought it up. When my biological mother brought me to this country, she gave me up for adoption. So I guess I grew up in the city as a... an angry kid. I don't know. I would... I would steal things I didn't want. I would hurt people I didn't know. Just this dumb kid running straight to a cliff, not caring how far it'd fall. Until I met my true mother, June. She never lost her faith. And that's when she brought you here. It's Valentine. Tonight she told me, she said, we're going home. I didn't know what she was talking about. Oh, 
home. What is that? The city was the only home I ever knew. But the look on her face, I realized she wasn't gonna give up on me. Somehow she believed I could be a son to be proud of. I couldn't hurt her anymore. That night I was supposed to meet someone we were gonna, I don't know, break into this warehouse, whatever. So I called him, I told him, I told him I wasn't going, but he did it anyway. Turns out there was someone working late that night. And this guy shot him. And he went to prison for it. Derek, whoever you were, whatever you did, that's all behind you now. The man with the scar, his name is Ray Lazaro. He spent his last 15 years in jail and he still blames me because I wasn't there. What does he want? It doesn't matter what he wants. Look, Kennedy. June and the Circle Cross saved my life. That's all that matters. Tell this to anyone. I'm glad you're telling me. Kids. Kids. You're a real cowgirl now. Uh, what are you doing here? Well, I've been calling and texting. I mean, I haven't heard from you in days. I'm beginning to worry. Um, uh, we were camping. Some kids in the city. I turned off my phone. Just as long as you're okay. And besides, I missed you. 
Um, this is Derek Sterling. Derek, Steve Marin. You must be the cowboy I've heard so much about. Thanks for taking such good care of her. Just doing my job. Miss Blaine, should I take the horses back? Thank you. Nice meeting you. should talk. Where's your friend? On his way back to California. That's too bad. Look, I should have seen it coming. Steve's a nice Look, guy. it's too bad because this, you and me, whatever this is, it's not gonna work. What? Look, I'm really happy with all the good things you wanna do here, and I'm gonna help you in any way I can, but you're a lawyer. I'm a ranch hand. You're a wealthy girl. I'm your employee. This ranch is the only thing we have in common. You have a really important life outside of all this. I don't. This is all I have. All I got. All I want. So let's just, let's just forget about it. Talbot, you're working late. Looks like your cowboy friend knew what he was talking about. Circle Cross has been making money all along. And Smith Blaine has been skimming for a long time. How'd he do it? Some months he double billed for his time. He took commissions on horse sales that never happened. Inflated the tax bill, pocketing the difference. So much for family ties. Those offers for the ranch? They're coming from a big development company in Denver. Development. And guess who's on their payroll? You can't do this. I just did. My lawyer is drafting a letter to make it official, but I wanted to tell you myself, in person, you're fired. You know, I worked for your father for over five years. I gave him a complete set of records of everything I did. You stole from him for five years, and those records are proof. Th that's ridiculous. Derek kept his own records of the ranch. We can document every penny you put in your pocket. You're going to take the word of some ranch hand. Oh, I trust that ranch hand a lot more than I could ever trust you. This isn't over, Kennedy. You're right. There's one more thing. You have 30 days to pay back the money you stole, or I'll press charges. You're fooling yourself, you know. That ranch is a thing of the past. Sooner or later, it'll start losing money. They all do. Be smart, Kennedy. Take the offer before it's too late. You can tear up that offer along with any other, because the Circle Cross is not for sale. 
30 days. Looking for Robin Donovan. Thank you. Robin. Kennedy. Hello. I have been meaning to catch up with you. How's everything at the ranch? Good. Yeah, that's, uh, that's actually why I'm here. Is there somewhere we can talk privately? Oh, sure. This way. Pardon me, Mr. Morgan. Smith Blaine is here. He says it's important. Another visitor from the Blaine family. I must be living right. Well, what do you want? Well, this part of the country used to be covered by tall grass prairie, most of which was farmed under. The National Register wants to preserve what's left. I went to see Robin Donovan, and she explained it to me. Basically, the National Register works with the state societies to find places with historic significance so they can preserve them. And they think that the Circle Cross has historic significance? I mean, with the cemetery and the wagon trail and all those other stories, there's no question. So the whole ranch would be on the National Register? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's still some paperwork and, you know, some hoops to jump through, but Robin thinks we have a real shot. So if they, if they do want the ranch, then um, how soon would we have to move? You won't have to move. See, that's the whole point. The ranch will go on with you and Derek just the way it is, in perpetuity. <laughs> um, but according to this, it also means you can never sell the ranch. It's a lot of money to be given up. Person would have to be a fool to sell a place like this. Thank you. Thank you. Something's going on with Wilson. He's barking like crazy. Kennedy! 
I give the orders, you follow. You let her go, okay? Sure thing, D. But first, I'm gonna need some traveling money. You know the figure we discussed? You know, I figure you being as ranch foreman. You got access to cash, just in case of emergency. Look, listen to me. No, you listen to me. You know me, and you know what I can do. So don't be stupid. Get the money, no cops. And meet me back at the lake house in one hour. Lazaro, I... Wait, find her. Find her. Let's go. Let's go. Find her. Let's go, boy. Go, Wilson. I sat in that prison because of you. You owe me. And if I can't get paid one way, then I get paid another way. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Oh, please, please. You don't have to do this. Shut up. I got nothing to lose. But you do. Sure you okay? Yeah, I think so. I'm so sorry. Hey, it wasn't your fault. It was my fault. Okay, I should have known Lazaro wouldn't just let it go. You think he's in the last of them? They said he's going right back to prison. This time, for good. Stirring up quite a hornet's nest around here lately. Coming into town, moving onto the ranch, going on about the National Register. You seem to know an awful lot about me. I know an awful lot about everything. That's what comes from spending your whole life in one town. What do you want? Yeah. It's 
Smith Lane came to see me the other day. I haven't talked to him in years. Now, all of a sudden, he's got this proposition for me. What kind of proposition? Well, he wants me to team up with him to contest your inheritance. Figures he can tie it up in court, wear you down, eventually build that little old golf course of his after all. Offered me 30% ownership. What'd you say? <laughs> I told him I don't do business with Blaine's. Never have, never will. Besides, the man's a crook. Yeah, I know. I fired him. Good for you. Never came to see us. Never called, never wrote. Didn't you ever once just want to know me? I told your mother when she left. It was a Blaine. And she was a Morgan. Did she really think she was going to let somebody else tell her what to do, how to live her life? Would she ever forgive me? She did, over time. But I think it would mean more to her now if you forgave yourself. <laughs> you always tell yourself there's plenty of time. The time goes by so fast. Don't ever put things off, girl. Don't ever wait to say what needs to be said. You're as beautiful as she was. No, boy. Oh, boy, uh, wait. Huh? Wait. What's this? old coot. Or you could call me grandfather. Grandfather. I like that. Mm. We come from different worlds, and the lives we've led up to now couldn't be further apart, but they led us here, now. All those things you said would drive us apart are the same things that brought us together. This isn't your life, Kennedy. Being here with you, this is what I want my life to be. This is where I belong, and I'm not going anywhere. 